Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Ashkelon. We're standing right here in the world's oldest Canaanite gate. It dates back to about 4,000 years. So at this biblical site, we'll be looking at the location of this place and why that's so important. We'll talk about the historical background of this location. Amazing, just absolutely amazing. We're gonna be looking at some amazing things that happened here in Ashkelon and some places of interest. We'll see the key events in the Bible that took place here and we'll end with the faith lesson in order to learn the major lessons God desires from us at this important biblical site. So I think you'll find this video very enlightening and transforming to your life. Now Ashkelon is located just south of Ashdod a bit, right along the Mediterranean Ocean. It's a beautiful place here. And it was originally a Canaanite fortress stronghold that the Israelites then took over. South of the modern city of Ashkelon is a large national park with ruins of the ancient city. It has a history of 4,000 years and was a port city located on the main trade route from Egypt to the north. It started as a huge fortified Canaanite city and continued as a Philistine city, turning into a thriving commercial center and independent city during the Hellenistic or Greek and Roman periods. Now the origin of the name Ashkelon appears to come from the word shekel, denoting a measure of weight, which would be a fitting name for a port city. The specific name Ashkelon is mentioned in Egyptian text dating back to the 19th century BC, and it appears again later in Egyptian inscription. Now Ashkelon also played a part in the battle against the Assyrians, Zedekah, the ruler of Ashkelon, joined the rebellion of King Hezekiah in around 701 BC. In response, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, became very angry and captured the king of Ashkelon and punished him for aligning himself with Hezekiah. He also took over the city and he leveled it and destroyed it. Now it was later rebuilt and then the king of Babylon, when he came and was destroying, he was more merciful and didn't destroy the city like the king of Assyria did. However, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did deport many of the people from Ashkelon away. Now, during the Persian period, Ashkelon was a prosperous commercial city under the port cities of Tyre and Sidon. Now the city changed hands many times after that, as Greeks and Maccabees and Romans, Muslims and Crusaders all had their turn. It was used as a border fortress by the Crusaders from around 1100 to 1191 AD. However, Saladin destroyed the Ashkelon fortress in AD 1191, during the end of the Crusader period. As a result, the city lay in ruins for a century. Now, as we mentioned, Ashkelon has the world's oldest Canaanite gate. It dates back to about 4,000 years. There is another Canaanite gate in Tel Dan, north of Jerusalem, up by the Sea of Galilee area, 
but it doesn't appear to be as old as this gate here. The gate was constructed in around 1850 BC, built mostly of mud, brick, and limestone. It's 49 feet or 15 meters long, over six feet or two meters wide, and almost 13 feet or four meters high. Ashkelon also has some amazing ancient walls that have been preserved. It has rampart walls, which are fortification walls, dating back to the time of the Canaanites and Israelites and more modern medieval walls dating to the time of the Crusaders when Ashkelon was used mainly as a fortress city. Well, we're at this amazing Roman Basilica old church that dates back to about the third century AD. So in around 350 AD after Christ, there began to be basilicas or Byzantine churches that sprung up everywhere. Now, the Byzantine period starts when Constantine, who was the Roman emperor in about 324, allowed Christianity to be a religion. And then later on, he made it the state religion of the Roman Empire. But here we are, this was a magnificent, massive Roman basilica church. Absolutely amazing. Well, this area, this city of Ashkelon, later had five actual basilica churches from the Byzantine period. This one dates to about the fifth century, and it's called Santa Maria Viridis Church. Amazing, just absolutely amazing that all these churches are here just to mark this spot and all the things that happened here. Now let's look at some amazing things that happened from the Bible here. Ashkelon is mentioned numerous times in the Bible. Joshua and the Israelites conquered Ashkelon in the conquest of the promised land as found in Joshua 13.3 and it was allotted to Judah, who then occupied it, as found in Judges 1.18. Then throughout the period of the Israelites, the Philistines and the Israelites had continual conflicts, and it was David who finally ended that. However, before David, when King Saul was ruling, the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh, and then brought it to this area here. When they captured the ark, then they killed King Saul and his sons. When they returned the Ark of the Covenant back to Bet Shemesh to the Israelites, they included from here, from Ashkelon, a tumor, an emerald, to send back with the Ark of the Covenant as a gift to the Israelites. So one of the gold tumors, or emeralds as we mentioned, was returned with the Ark of the Covenant by the Philistines, and it was from here in Ashkelon. 
It says in 1 Samuel 6, 17, Now these gold tumors, which the Philistines returned as a guilt offering to the Lord, says one from Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, and one for Ekron. Ashkelon is mentioned by David when, after Saul and Jonathan die, David lamented and mourned over the death of King Saul and Jonathan. It says in 2 Samuel 1, 19, Your beauty, Israel, is slaughtered on your high places. Talking about the capturing of the ark and things like that. How the mighty have fallen. Talking about King Saul and Jonathan. Then it says, Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will celebrate. So King David was saying, don't tell it in Ashkelon or in the towns of the Philistines so that they don't rejoice over what they had done to the Israelites and having captured the ark. Now Ashkelon was later denounced by Jeremiah, Zephaniah, and Zechariah. It was prophesied over them and then they were denounced. Now, what are some faith lessons that we can learn from Ashkelon? God used the Philistines to punish the Israelites repeatedly. Throughout their history, as we said, up until David, the Philistines and the Israelites were, had this continual battle. And God used the Philistines to punish the Israelites on occasion and to get their attention. So sometimes God will do things and allow things to happen in our lives to get our attention. Sometimes he will cause people, events, circumstances to get our attention and he will discipline us through these different means if we are disobedient, if we turn away from him, if we fall away from him. So Ashkelon here in some regards is a representative of God using the Philistines to discipline the Israelites. Now God judged the city of Ashkelon and held them accountable for their sins. In the same way, God will hold those who reject him accountable today as well. We will all stand and give an account to God. Now the Philistines and those of Ashkelon, they had seen all of the miracles that God had done through the Israelites. They had heard how the Israelites crossed the Jordan River, they had heard how they crossed the Red Sea, they were given the law on Mount Sinai, so they knew all about these miracles. And so they had an opportunity to turn to the one true living God. They worshiped false gods, one of their gods was Dagon, but they had an opportunity to worship the true and living God. The Israelite faith was always open to any people group. They could join in, so God held the those of Ashkelon accountable, even though he used them to discipline the Israelites. He still held them accountable. So in our lives, those that God might use to discipline us, maybe they do wrong things, God will hold them accountable, but at the same time, because God is sovereign, he will use those things to get our attention as well. So the question for us is, are we right with God? Are we walking close to him? Are we living in obedience to him? Or do we have a dull heart, a hard heart, turning away from Him, not very sensitive to Him, not praying, not doing the things that we should do, maybe reading our Bibles? So if we're away from God, now is the time to come back. And Ashkelon is a great example of how to do that and that we should do it. Now in the same way that God wanted to use the Israelites to be a light to the nations, God wants to use us as well to be a light. But if we have a bad testimony or we're not walking with him, then we're not a very good light. So what kind of a light are we? The Israelites at different times were very, very poor examples of being a light to the world. So God would use these nations once again, these Philistines to get their attention, to discipline them because they weren't being light. So are we lights? Are we letting our light shine before others? So I hope that you have found this video helpful uh, thank you for watching and God bless.